Okay, this is a lesson about making terrain. Um, firstly, we're going to use Adobe Photoshop to create a height map. A height map is a, a texture that describes um, different levels of height. You know, the white being the highest and the blacks being the lowest and gray in between. So usually uh, uh, 512 by 512 pixels. Okay, so that's your uh, height map boundary. Now, we want to make this black in color and the white, so we have a, a contrast. Now, the way to generate a height map is to go to filter in Photoshop, go to render clouds. Okay, so that's your that's your height map. Look, these these points they are the highest point of of the terrain. Um, aside from that, you can adjust. The, the brightness, right? To make it higher or the contrast, okay? To give it a little bit more uh, difference in depth. Um, so we can also use a certain, uh, the select tool. If you press shift, you can actually select a few sections. We're gonna make some roads and sections, okay? So let's say we have a block here. Okay, we're gonna use that press shift so that there's a plus sign on your icon and you can okay create a circle here yeah. we're gonna make more roads leading to this build this block of building okay now, when we have this selected, we can actually change the color. So, I'm gonna use the paint tool, and you know you can change the sizes here. You know, make it bigger or really small. But because I'm gonna block in colors, so I'm making it really big. Um, then I'm gonna select a color. If you press shift, press alternate, you can select any of the color. Look, the panel here is changing. Okay. And I want my ground level to be about that high. So that's how I block in. Okay, maybe some areas a little bit darker. So you have, uh, you know, roads that are, that have a gradient, okay? And after that, save it to your folder anywhere, you know, maybe on the desktop. Okay, you're going to save as the JPEG file and name that terrain height. Save it. And that's it. That's the end of the Photoshop uh, session. So let's go back to 3D Studio Max. In 3D Studio Max, um, what we're going to do now is to create a plane. Okay, that has maybe 64 segments. Okay, so we turn the edge face on and we can see it. Okay, so that's that's the terrain. Now we go to the modify tab and select the displace modifier. Okay. Once we've selected that, we can then pick the the uh, terrain height map that we've just created in Photoshop. Increase the strength, and we have a terrain. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna change that color to green. So that's our terrain. If you find that you know it's uh, the segments are a little bit not so smooth, then you make it 128. That's double the size. Okay, so you have a you have more detail on your terrain. So now that we have a terrain, we're gonna create a texture on it. Maybe we're gonna put a glass material with that. So we name that ground. Um, this time we can use a totally different material from the maps for uh, diffuse color. We can pick a uh, noise. 
okay because we're going to generate a grass like material so pick the noise and the main color should be green and the other color should be very dark a very dark green or even even black and we can set the, the tiling to maybe 40 okay go back to the material slot and apply that with, with that selected okay so we can give it a render to see if it's, if it's okay well, we'll make it a little bit more fine so say maybe 70 Okay, so that's more like it. Now, you know, in we, we cannot export a noise-based texture to a 3D uh, uh, games package. So what we're going to do is we want to bake the texture, okay? That's called render the texture or texture baking. So the texture baking process involves a few steps. Um, firstly, you want to generate some shadows. Right, so let's go to create a, a target direct light. Okay, we're going to generate in the modify panel, generate a ray trace shadow. Um, intensity, intensity is okay, use those. make it bigger and say give it a render and see what happens okay see we're generating some shadows now um, I want the shadow to be more obvious so let's have a look okay so that's that's a landscape but as it is you cannot export the the uh, three student make shadows to director shockwave for example so what you can do is you can bake the texture. The way to do it is to go to render you know, with that terrain selected. Go to render and then render the texture. Okay? So that's the plane that we selected. And then I'm going to have to add an output file into, into the diffuse map folder. And we can save it also in the desktop as a jpeg file with a terrain texture as, as the name and it should be a jpeg save it with full quality um, now we can generate you know the, the larger the resolution the, the higher quality your texture will be and we have to generate the lights and the shadows. Okay, so that's how we bake a texture. Um, so let's render it and see what happens. Okay, so that's your rendered texture. Now the way to apply that is to, now this is saved into your desktop, but we want to save the UVW mapping we have here. So it's, auto, it's automatically generated the UVs. So now we save the UVs onto the desktop, you know, save it as terrain. Okay. And the next step would be to delete that and use a, a uh, unwrap UVW as a modifier and then load the previous UVW terrain coordinates that we've just saved. Okay, load it. Get back to the materials editor on another slot. Load the bitmap that we just baked. You know, the texture baked terrain. Okay, load that. 
go back and apply that to our terrain. And once you've removed the light, okay, the shadow will still remain because it's a it's a baked shadows. So if you export that to a games engine or director shockwave, you will see the shadows. But this is called a baked texture. So you have the lights and the shadows, you know, on the on the terrain. So that's it.